Hello everyone, my name is Andre, and today my group and I would like to present on the movie Moana and how its story fits into the pretext structure. So with me today is Rich Chen, Sujum and Pan Long, and together our initials form our team name, the RSAF. <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to begin our presentation to explain the hows and whys our movie Moana fits into the pretext structure. So we first begin with the exposition, whereby the first scene depicts the goddess Tessiti and how she creates life as it is with the power of her heart. However, Maui, a demigod, steals her heart in an attempt to give humanity the power of creation. However, he is shortly struck down by the demon Tekka. We then skip to a millennia later, whereby Moana resides in a village afraid of change. Who needs a new song? This song is all we need. This is the first verse, it is one of the verses in the opening song, which depicts how you should be happy by being content with what you have. This showcases how the natives view change as unneeded and unnecessary, and they rather remain in their stagnant life, much to the discontent of the main character. We then move on to the inciting incident. So throughout the exposition, throughout the exposition, the, there are many events that build up towards the inciting incident. So the first event would be the destruction of the island, leading to the lack of harvest and harvest of fish and coconuts. And the second event would be a calling that's pulling towards the main character's heartstrings for her to venture out into the reef to see what's out there. So this was all just a build up for the actual inciting incident, which is how Moana's grandmother, Tala, falls gravely ill and with her dying breath, pushes Moana to set sail on her journey to restore the heart of her pity. We believe this is the inciting incident as it breaks the daily life of the main character and pushes her out to set out on her journey. So from this incident, we can see Moana's unconscious and conscious goals. Her conscious goal being to save her people and her island from the ongoing disaster, and her unconscious goal to break the norm in her community that change is unneeded, and that experiencing new things is important and vital to everyone. I'll now pass over the time to Sundram so that he can present the rising action and the climax of our story. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, so we feel that the, the start of the rising action and the show the, the start of the conflict. So as you can see that Moana is leaving the island and along the way she encountered a storm and uh, asked the ocean for help to find Maui. So as you can see that next night she got stranded on the island and she found Maui. And she found Maui. So um, Ma Maui tricked Moana and left without her but Moana eventually got back to her boat and along the way there's a mini series of conflicts they encountered such as uh, encountering Tamota, where in this event, uh, Tamota stole the heart from Ma uh, Mona, and Mona and Mari uh, got back the heart from Tamota. And then in the next conflict shows, uh, where they actually wanted to get back the food so they can encounter the villain of the movie. Uh, so in this slide, you can see that uh, they went to the underwater world to find Tamota to get back the food. <coughs> So all these events that are in the slide are the tension and it shows the story of how it builds up which is eventually towards the climate. So in the next slide you can see is the, actually the first battle between Mona, Maui and Tika, the lava monster. It's actually the villain of this movie. So we feel that this is the conflict. So we feel that this is the climax because it shows the hero and the villain of the movie and as well as the, it's the peak of the movie. So, as you can see, Maui is using his hook to fight against Tika. However, he was unsuccessful and he returned back to the boat to Mona. So, and he told Mona that she has to, they have to turn around and head back. But Mona insisted that she could do it and face Tika, calling uh, Maui to protect Mona using his hook, which eventually pushed the boat backwards and then uh, causing his hook to be damaged. This leaving Maui in despair and leaving Mona behind. So all these, uh, all these uh, events shows that uh, a part of the climate because it shows how it, uh, in between the villain and the hero as well as the pig and also it shows that the, the choices made by the Moana was eventually a bad outcome. So yeah. And the next part will be, I will leave it to Richard. For the following action, this is a segment where we get to see the story's loose end converging into, the conclusion, into a conclusion. So in the following 
having seen Mona is at her lowest point, utterly being defeated by Tekka and having Maui to <coughs> abandon her in her mission to restore the heart. With this, she felt a sense of unworthiness and she returned the heart to the ocean, telling it to choose someone else. Moments pass, a glowing manta ray swam in and transformed into a familiar face that uh, Mo Moena knew, Tala, her grandmother. So Tala comforted her for bestowing such a heavy responsibility on her. In this scene, you also get to see that Moena was at her turning point as she realizes that uh, she was she couldn't bear to leave the mission and she was reminded by her traditional roots as voyagers, seeing visions of her ancestor sailing through the ocean. With her reassurance, uh, she dived into the ocean floor to collect the heart of Tefiti and embark on a mission again. So, as she faced the car again, this time it was without uh, Maui. But short, shortly after, Maui returned to aid her in the battle. This scene shows that Maui uh, is no longer unwilling, but willing to sacrifice even at the expense of his hope to, to help uh, Moena. So, as you can see, Maui eventually sacrifices hope to save Moena uh, from, <coughs> from Teka's battle. Attack. As Moana reaches the peak of the island, she realizes that there is nowhere, there is no place fit for the heart of Tefiti. And as she looks back at Teka, she observes intently and she realizes that Teka has a marking that only <coughs> could fit the heart of Tefiti. At that point of time, she realizes that Teka is actually Tefiti. <coughs> so, in this following action, this loose, all of the loose ends are converging into a conclusion. Firstly, Moana regained her confidence despite being defeated by Tekka. And secondly, uh, Maui regained his willingness to help uh, Moana in her cause. And lastly, uh, it's where Moana realizes that Tekka is actually deputy. So this draws us to our re to the resolution. Resolution is the segment where we get to uh, see the big questions, the main problems being answered. And as you can see, uh, Moana eventually returned and after the battle, um, we get to see that Maui has a transformation from unwilling to willing. And through this act of uh, courageness, Tefiti actually uh, redeemed Maui by giving him a new book. So throughout, um, as the story close, draws closer to the end, we can see that Moana and Maui has forged a strong friendship from, from the start to end. And with the success of their mission, uh, Maui, and Maui and Moana part ways and Mo Moana returns back to her island. So for Dinoma, <coughs> this is the segment where we, that this is where all stories have to end. And it, there is also a segment where, we, it, where it presents the outcome of the resolution. So with the heart of Tefiti restored, the destruction of the island subsides. With the return of Moana to, the, to her village, she actually seeks to honor her family by taking the role of the new leader of the village, placing a stone on her ancestral grounds. And lastly, we get to see Moana leading her, her villagers back to their traditional roots as voyagers. Uh, in conclusion, we get to see uh, that Moana did fulfill her conscious goal, which is to save her village from the ongoing destruction by, placing, by restoring the heart of the people, and the unconscious goal, which is to lead, to lead her villagers out of their community's norm, leading them to experience and venture to new islands. So now I'll pass the time to Fang Long to explain about the characters and archetypes in this movie. Hi everyone, I'm Fang Long, and I'm here to explain the three characters archetypes in the movie. Our first character is Moena, our good view of the archetype is really hero. As you can see, despite her inexperience in sailing, she's set out on a journey to find Maui <coughs> for his help in order to restore the heart, which at the same time saving her village from destruction. Moina also managed to encourage Maui to get back to his feet, to regain control of his school when he could not control it after they got it back from Tamatoa. The main reason we view 
Moena archetype as really hero is that Moena willing to face Taka all alone by herself, knowing that Maui will not be by her side helping her after he found out that his hook will be destroyed if he fought against Taka once more. Next, the second character is Maui. His archetype is the Herod, the Irene hero and the fallen mentor. For the Herod, he indirectly caused a disaster when he took the heart from Tefiti, even though he was just for the benefit for his people. For the Irene hero, he was forced on a journey by Moena after he rejected the idea of restoring the heart to where it was, as he deemed the heart of Tefiti brings him back luck. For the fallen mentor, Maui helps and guide Moena, helps and guide Moena to become a master wayfinder, even though he himself struggled on his own, as you can see from the history of his tattoos, and the part where he was demoralized when he realized he could not control his food like he used to. Our third and last character is Tala. She's Moena's grandmother. Her archetype is more towards the shaman as she is the one that helps and guides Moena throughout her journey. First, she showed Moena their religious tradition roots voyages, which makes Moena more determined to set out on the journey. Secondly, Tala encouraged Moena to venture beyond the reef again when Moena had already given up hope to go out to the sea after she tried venture beyond the reef for the first time. During Moena Lowell's moment, where she returned the heart of Tefiti <coughs> to the ocean, Tala was there in spirit form to guide Moena, encourage Moena to carry on the journey, and giving her strength to face Taka once more, but this time alone. Hence, this is the main reason why the characters fit into their archetype the story fits well with your free text structure. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.